Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. So, what I'm here to talk to you guys is about folk music. And, you know, it's funny because all these people are talking about storytelling, and I'm like, oh, well, now I can't say, hey, folk music is about storytelling. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what it is. That's what we're doing when we play music, when we're playing this folk music. We're telling stories, stories that speak to the human condition, stories that speak to who we are as people, stories that teach us how to live and teach us how to learn and teach us how to cope, stories about nature and friendship and relationships, stories that are riddled with anecdotes of love in all its complexities and simplicities. We all know about music about love, it's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> but those stories are about love between a partner, right? They're about stories between family members. They're about stories about your community, love for your community and, and your country and your world. This land is your land. If I had a hammer, these stories speak to us as people, anywhere and everywhere, for everyone and no one. Stories about legends like John Henry. Maybe you don't know about John Henry. The man that could drive steel faster than the steam-powered hammer that was built to replace him. And now there's novels and poetry and festivals dedicated to him. These stories define us as a community. They help us relate to each other. America has been recorded through song these stories that talk about everything that's happened over the last 300 years, and then some, and then before that. African-American slave songs and spirituals that then evolved into gospel and blues. Blues that then evolved into jazz and rock and roll and country. Fiddle tunes and ballads that came from the British Isles that then got regurgitated and transformed and replayed in the Appalachians and the Ozarks. Songs that came up from the West Indies, uh, from Zydeco and Cajun and Creole, that now make up much of the music of New Orleans. Tejano music and corridos that make up a lot of the songs in the Southwest. These songs are our songs. We tell these stories to each other all the time, whether we know it or not, we see them every day. When we walk out our door and we walk down the street, there are those stories. We look somebody in the eye and there's a story, there's a story behind that person. But do we listen? Are we trying to find those stories? Or as Congressman McDermott said, are we fiddling around on our iPhones heads down, headphones in, not looking around us to the people and the places and the things around us. These stories make up who we are.
Thank you. So, along with the stories, along with the looking up and seeing who's around you, there's, there's something going on. There's a little bit of a problem. We've forgotten what it's like to cut loose. We've forgotten what it's like to just, like, get on someone's face and go like this, you know? Like, <laughs> we don't know what it's like to just be crazy for once in a while, and people talk about crazy as if it's a problem. There's nothing wrong with being crazy. It means you're alive, Woo! right? Yeah. It means you have something to share. It means you have something going on in your mind. It means you're a dreamer. It means you have imaginations that go on in your head, and you're not afraid to let the people around you know what they are. When you think about the early American musicians, I mean, just picture for a second being like Woody Guthrie or something, I don't know, whoever it is, riding around on a train, seeing the sunrise, seeing the sunset, seeing the landscape, seeing the birds and the streams and the fish and the cows and whatever, getting off and playing music for people in a community. Maybe getting fed a home-cooked meal by somebody as a wanderby, as a passerby. Those are all stories. Those are all things to share with people. Folk music is built on the notion that everybody can participate. It's accessible. And because it's accessible, it means it's relevant to a wider variety of people. That the universality of it all means that it's communal means that we can, all, we can all do it. We can all be a part of it. This folk music that I'm talking about, this, this art, this thing that you play in your backyard or on your front porch or in your living room for no other purpose than self-expression and enjoyment is what I believe to be the antidote to what I see as a, a growing trend in human disconnection. We don't... We don't talk to people as much. Or in the same way. I was on the bus yesterday. I was, whatever I was doing. And these two people are sitting right next to each other. Get on the bus together, sit down, and, and both pull their phones out immediately and like say, you know, one word things to each other and then like go back to their, their phone. I'm like, what are, you, what are you doing? Like, what kind of conversation is that? What kind of stories are you telling to each other through a phone? It's like, oh, let me text you right next to you and tell you, what are you doing? You. you you want to go to dinner? Maybe. <laughs> I'll talk to you later about it. You know, <laughs> what's that about? Folk music is about participation. It's about using a washboard or a, uh, a kazoo or your thigh or some keys. I mean, whatever is around you that makes sound and can convey some something, anything to make music, to tell a story.
That's what I'm talking about, right? Now I'll be, I'll be real, I'll be real quick. I know everybody's going over, and then I play the songs. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, stealing from from Bob Dylan, and I, I hope he respects that I'm doing that. Uh, traditional music is about plagues and Bibles and death and vegetables and legends. I know it was one of those wordings. You know. I mean? uh, it's about geese that are really people. It's about swans that turn into angels. It's about roses that grow out of our heads. It's too unreal to die. It, it'll live on forever. Nobody's going to hurt it, okay? This music is for us to do whatever we want with. These songs that I'm playing for you have been played and written by one person, some of whom we don't know where they come from. And I get them, and I can do whatever I want with them. They're my songs to do what I will and tell my story through these songs. This music is alive. It's alive in all of us here. We all have different ways of telling stories. This is my way. I tell stories through music. There's people here that, have, that tell stories through photography and slam poetry, all with their own personal way of conveying that that emotion, that perspective, that thought, that idea. We're here today to rethink, rethink how we attack the future. That's a harsh word, but it's a harsh times, you know. Let's rethink how we tell stories. Let's rethink who we talk to, how we connect with people, how we talk to people, you know. And not talking to people, talking with people. Right? All this, all this stuff is being thrown at us, but we're not just listening and talking and listening and talking. I leave you with this final song that I learned uh, from a couple, Hobie and Gina Kiter, uh, in Astoria, Oregon, about two years ago. Um, and we were sitting around this room with a couple of my bandmates and, and this older couple, Hobie and Gina, and playing songs for a couple hours, you know, exchanging songs, and this song came out, and I was like, oh my gosh, what the fuck is this? You know? <laughs> this is intense, it's weird, it's eerie, it's, it's, it's visceral, like, what is this? You know? And I asked them where it came from, and they said, well, the Collins family brought it over from the Ozarks to the Oklahoma Hills, and, and I can only, around the 20th century, and I can only imagine that then that song migrated to California after the Dust Bowl, and then somehow it weaseled its way up through Oregon to Hobie and Gina. And now I have this song. And I don't know the Collins family. I don't know who they are. I don't know where they are. I don't know what they are. But I have their song. I have a bit of their story. That makes us connected. That makes us brothers and sisters. That makes us a part of one another. Right? So rethink how we tell these stories and who we tell them to and how we tell them to each other.